morning, good morning, and welcome back to Good Morning Tobago right here on Tobago Updates. This morning, I have the privilege of chatting online with the Honorable Senator Anil Roberts. Good morning and welcome, who is Member of Parliament and the former Minister for of Youth and of Sport and Youth Affairs. Uh, good morning and welcome. Good morning to the beautiful island of Tobago. And congratulations on a great carnival and earning some foreign exchange. Good morning. Good morning, but that has not stopped the foreign exchange problem. Actually, we still have credit card limits that is hindering a number yeah. of uh, businesses here on the island. But regardless of that, we have gotten you on the show, finally. Right. So Tobago wants to hear from you because you have made some bold statements regarding uh, one of the newly appointed senators who has come into the parliament uh, representing Tobago, as well as Senator Lawrence Hislop in regards to the idea of creating a marina here in Tobago. We know in the last budget presentation that I believe it was one million that was allocated towards having a marina in Tobago. One million. Uh, tell us a bit about that. Well, you, 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 you tell me a lot of things there. I might talk for the whole time. Let me tell you, the newly minted Senator Ansel Dennis, you said he represents Tobago. He did not. I am a half Tobogonian. My father is Tobogonian. I grew up in Trinidad. And let me tell you something. I've never been so disappointed in a Tobogonian on his initial maiden contribution. Normally, you come to the Senate and you try to show us what are your qualifications, your intelligence, your ideas, your, your positions and policy and so on. Mr. Dennis came into the Senate and started a political terrain attacking Tobogonians in Trinidad in the Red House. And I sat there in absolute amazement, stunning shock at this gentleman, because I know a little bit about Tobago and community and love for Tobogonian and Tobogonian love each other and, and so on. And he was a total disgrace, spewing untruths from the beginning to the end. So I had to decimate him. Normally, you leave a little uh, space for a maiden contribution. But it was so pathetic and so PNIs that I couldn't believe it. Now, you must understand, don't ever say that PNM people represent Tobago. That does not happen. They represent PNM. When we were debating a bill uh, for local so-called put it in inverted commas, Tobago self-governance, when a Tobogonian, Keith Christopher Rowley from Mason Hall, brought a bill not to give Tobago and the THA more uh, power to determine their own issues, to protect themselves, to increase national security, border control, coast guard, to increase the ability to take economic decisions, get some oil and gas from fields that are in Tobago's water. Nothing like that did Keith Rowley and the PNM bring. You know what he brought? A, a bill to say that he instructed the, the EBC to increase the number of seats in Tobago from 12 to 15. And that's why he got a cut tail, because Tobogonians don't like cheating. So those PNM do not represent Tobago. He came to attack a fellow Tobogonians in the most vile manner, spewing untruths about the partnership and UNC not taking on Tobago. Anybody who is truthful will know that even though PNM was in charge with the Honorable Orville London, that Kamala Prasad Nisessa would include Orville London in every discussion, every consultation. He, she never put him down to sit down like the PNM put the Chief Secretary before to sit down on the floor while Rohan Sinanan and Stuart Young uh, dictated to them. They then, Senator Hislop, I thought he was a young, intelligent fellow. He'd made a few contributions. I give them a little blight because they're PNM and they have to talk some untruths and so on. But Senator Hislop came to the park to the Senate and told abject total lies. He said, and that's when the Honorable Tobogonian President of the Senate asked me to take a leave of 10 minutes because Senator Hislop was making the most asinine statement that I, Anil Robert, I'm against a marina for Tobago. I am a fisherman. I am the one who espoused that Tobago should have two marinas, that Tobago, the most beautiful island on God green earth, with the best fishing, especially sport fishing, which is marlin fishing and so on, where rich people like to pay plenty money to catch and release, that I have been advocating since 2010 
for two marinas in Tobago. Back then, I got the Prime Minister, Kamala Passad, the Sessor, to make, and you can check the record statements, that two marinas will be built in Tobago, that Ashwa Jack, the honorable leader of the TOP, also said that two marinas would be there for Tobago and Tobagonians to create our revenue streams and jobs for mechanics, for boat cleaning, for boat building, restaurant, shopping, activity, diving, sport fishing. The marinas are the greatest thing. And Senator Hislop stood up there in the Senate and told a blatant falsehood that I am against a marina. At I, when I told him that he's lying, he still was not man enough to withdraw and to apologize. And let me tell you something about the PNM. Keith Christopher Rowley's a Tobagonian, and y'all don't remember back in 1991 to 1995, part of his portfolio was the Minister of Marine Affairs, and Tobago had no marina. He has been Prime Minister for nine years. He had the he, PNM was leading the THA from since 2003 for 20 years, yet no marina. But I have to go when I go fishing in Grenada, St. Vincent, St. Lucia. I have to see the most spectacular facilities where you pay big money to park up. You could fuel it up. People come and check your engine. They come and you buy groceries and pick up some of them yachts. When you're taking groceries for three, four days, you're spending all kind of 3,000 US and so on. I have to see every other Caribbean island have a marina, but Tobago, the greatest of them all, the most beautiful of them all, with the best fishing of them all, has none because PNM has been in control. PNM has been in control nine years. They're promising marina nine years. It airage and in the 10th budget, Senator Hislop has the audacity to pretend and feign that he knows something about marina and Tobago and PNM want marina. PNM is a total failure. And Senator Hislop must learn to tell the truth. He embarrassed himself as a young Tobogonian. Right. And from your perspective, uh, do you think the pushback that you and your colleagues are giving is that it is taking so long and that it is just another budgetary announcement that would never materialize? But it, uh, exactly. I don't need to push back. Anybody with eyes, ears, and who could feel and see, is there a marina in Tobago? No, it's Tobago, the greatest. Fish. Do you know in 2011, in a sports fishing uh, tournament outside Charlottesville, a young boy from Trinidad and Tobago caught and released a 1,008-pound blue marlin? Do you know how much money people in the world right now, they go to the Azores and Tenerife and all over the world, out in uh, New Zealand, to hold and feel the power of a blue marlin? That's called a grander. People pay upwards of 1,500 US for every four hours for a captain to take them out to get the opportunity, whether they get one or not. Just four hours, 1,500 US. You could imagine the amount of people all over the world who wanted to sail their big yachts and their big boats to Tobago to get that opportunity. But they would not and could not. Why? Because there's no marina. And there's no marina when the PNM has been in charge, when Keith Rowley has been the minister, when Keith Rowley has been the prime minister, when the PNM has been in charge of the THA for 20 years, no marina, and these people have the audacity to stand up there with a straight face and say, Anil don't want marina. They promised marina up in three budgets ago, go and read it, and say, yes, they're doing this survey and a Dutch company coming. Where it is? So where do you think, um, I mean, seeing that they are now proposing it, it seems as though the research is now about to happen and that one million is just the initial cost based on a conversation I had with Senator Hislop himself because I asked, do you think one million towards a marina is sufficient? And he indicated that that's just the initial cost. So seeing that it had been announced in previous budget, is it that... Um, you believe nothing happened with it, and now they are just bringing it back up because elections are on the way. Well, you know it better than me, and they take people stupid. Poor, poor Mr. Hislop. 
He's not a minister and he's disrespected by his own party. He don't even know what's going on. I know more about what's going on in the PNM than him. One million dollars, they just do that to say that they have an element to say, oh, Mirrorina is coming. There have been studies done since 1992. They know the options of where in Tobago has the depth and the wind and, and, and the, where it should be built. There are places that are ready to go. The requirement for a marina in Tobago is upwards of 100 million US. What you tell me about 1 million TT? The, the whole Tayak do him 1 TT. You come in to tell me and Mama Guy Tobagoni about 1 million TT? 1 million TT is what Rowley spent to travel to go and play golf over a six week period. That is abject total nonsense and Mama Gizam. No marina ain't coming because the PNM has been there and has not delivered. They come to Mamagai people because they feel people go go and vote. Oh, marina, the UNC, the, the THA, the, all of the self-government bills that come. The THA must be decide with the support and financing of the central government where the marina will go, when it will go, and who will build it. The THA must have the autonomy to take decisions in Tobago. Why must Trinidadians tell Tobago where the marina come in and when it come in? Understood. So as a part of the conversation, have you raised the idea of the importance of that collaboration that this current government needs to have with the THA for this to even be a viable thing? They need no collaboration. The PNM has shown over the last 60 years that it disrespects Tobago, that it believes it must control Tobago. The one person and the one prime minister who shows that Tobago must handle Tobago affairs, that she does not even put candidates in Tobago. It's not that she disrespects Tobago and does not think Tobago is important to put candidates. Kamala Prasad Bissessa believes Tobagonians, the THA, must have self-governance. They must be able to protect themselves, protect their, their, their coastline, not come to the Minister of National Security in Trinidad to beg to see if they could get police posts, to see if they could get police equipment, to see if they could get Coast Guard vessel. Tobago must see about Tobago. So the PNM must be rejected. Trinidad must reject PNM like Tobago rejected them so that the Tobago self-governance bill could be brought to the Parliament by Kamala Prasad Bissessa debated and passed so that Tobago could also have part and parcel of their own oil and gas. Right now, Trinidad taking gas from out of Tobago and then telling Tobago how much ahead they could get. We have to be mad, people. Tobago must have self-government, self-governance. The law will be brought by Kamala Prasad Bissessa as soon as Rowley called the election because people in Trinidad are sick of Rowley and the PNM. After conversations with the two Tobago MPs for Tobago East and Tobago West, they have hinted that this bill may be coming before the Parliament in its current state very soon. Do you think that the UNC would be supporting this bill in its current form? We have not seen the bill in its current form and anything that the PNM brings. Why are they telling you you're bringing it now? Stop with the mammogism and the dishonesty. And these MPs, you're talking about PNM representing Tobago. They stand up there and they allow PNM to devastate Tobago. They allow an issue about oil damaging Tobago for centuries to come, just not investigating. And now they claim they catch a boat that was already caught since May 12, 2024. The Tobagonian MPs that are PNM, do not represent Tobago. They represent PNM. Anything the, the PNM says, they go along with. One of them, even in a debate, told me that when there was, was the six all time, that when Tobago cannot handle its affairs, Trinidad would step in. These PNM do not understand and do not respect Tobagonians as equals. So nothing they say. They've been there 10 years. What have they done? It's always show me what you have done. Don't tell me what you feel. Don't tell me what you think. Also, the Tobago MPs, they, them and all don't even know that them gone. When they scream, them <laughs> gone. So why are you talking to them? They're not even in PNM anymore. Interesting. That's very interesting that you brought that up. Quite funny, I must say. <laughs> um, but when it comes to Tobago autonomy, it's no joke for Tobagonians. It's something that... Tobagonians have fought for for a long time and if what is being proposed is something that the THA and the central government can agree on, do you see the opposition supporting something that is supported on both sides? 
Meaning the THA says the yes. Say. Meaning we, the THA well, says yes to what is We don't care done. what the PNM say because the PNM is dishonest. But if the THA, who is duly elected 14 1 to govern Tobago, sends something and tells the leader of the UNC, we agree with this. I can assure you, the UNC will support the THA, the duly re elected representatives of Tobago. If they say they like it, well, the UNC go in with it. We don't care what the PNM say. And the PNM will not bring anything, I can guarantee you, that will make Tobago happy and give Tobago autonomy because the, the PNM is crenny. They are greedy. They want to build an airport for three million and people give Tobago the hotel space, the advertisement, the marketing, it to get 3 million people to land in Tobago. Right now, they only have 50,000 50, international arrivals per year. You're 2,950,000 short. So if the THA sends a bill or endorse and we listen to the press conference and we listen to the chief secretary as he debates and he says, that his people of Tobago agree with the legislation going to the parliament, I can assure you that the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bissessa has already stated that what Tobago wants the duly elected officials, she will support in the parliament of Trinidad and Tobago. So the opposition will support any bill that has the approval of the THA. We ain't care about PNM. Understood. But we're going to take a quick break right here and we're going to be back with much more. We saw that the Trinidad and Tobago national team now has a new coach and a lot more that's happening. So we'll be back with a lot more after this. See you soon, guys. Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Good Morning Tobago right here on Tobago Updates. Now, we have been chatting with the Honorable Senator Anil Roberts. Good morning and welcome back, sir. Good morning. Thank you. And good morning to Tobago. Right. And as we continue the conversation, we were chatting a bit about that Tobago self-governance bill now. What the members of the PNM are saying is that the bill in its current form, though it's not perfect, is far superior than what we currently have in the current THA Act in their opinion and it should be supported because it's a step towards progress while some of the other recommendations that this THA administration are making should be uh, on, an ongoing uh, changes that would co continue to happen to the bill over time. How do you feel about that? Well that statement as you said it shows why no real Tobagonian should ever be a PNM. That is the most arrogant, idiotic statement I've ever heard. They are talking about Tobago self-governance and autonomy and suggesting that the PNM, a Trinidad entity and the central government must dictate and decide the pace at which Tobago gets to see about herself. That in its, <laughs> I have to excuse me for laughing, but that is the most laughable thing. The PNM, as I said, I don't care what they say because they are greedy. They only want to control. They have wanted power. They have disrespected Tobago since the constitutional arrangement back in the 1940s when 32 people were brought on a committee and only one Tobagonian. They have disrespected A.N.R. Robinson. They've disrespected Tobago throughout. I don't have to remind Tobagonians about that. And that statement about the PNM is going to tell us and the THA at what pace the PNM believes Tobago should see about herself. That is ridiculous. We want in the UNC to hear what the THA have to say. Whatever the Tobago House of Assembly say, that's where we go in. We're not going to decide because Kamala Prasad Misesa has already stated, and when she was prime minister, she showed the respect and was moving towards that. But the PNM, Rowley himself, did not agree and vote for the a bill that was much better than anything the PNM brought. All the PNM knew to do post haste and move with speed is to try to steal our election in Tobago by changing seat from 11, uh, from 12 to 15. And imagine in a tsunami of discontent, one of the new seats created by the independent EBC stand up in a tsunami of rejection of the PNM. 
That's to show you how dictatorial and how myopic the PNM is. So I don't want to hear from the PNM. We will not support any watered down version brought by the PNM. We will not be dictated to by the PNM. We will take advice and the honorable leader of the opposition will meet at the right time, as she has done before, and the deputy political leader, Jolene John, with the THA. The THA shall instruct the opposition on what it wants, and we will follow the THA because we believe, we're not talking, we believe that Tobago must chart its own course, that there must be equality of arrangement between Trinidad and Tobago. We do not believe in the oppression of Tobagonians. So it is a very simple thing when you know what you believe. The THA will set the pace for the central government of Trinidad when Kamala is prime minister. End of story. We will not accept any suggestion by the PNM that them in charge and they must tell us what to do. All right. Well, I'm glad that you brought it into perspective for Tobagonians on where the opposition stands as it relates to the Tobago. Can I just say something day. before you go to sport? Let me just say something because the two senators and the Minister of Tourism and the PNM continue to tell lies about Sanders. If Sanders was coming to invest hotel and money in Tobago, I would be the first one not only to support I'll be the first one to book a room and come across in the all-inclusive. If Sandals, the company, was coming to put one red cent in Tobago, Sandals invested in Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Kitts, Antigua, Bahamas, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, spending average of 150 million to 200 million US per hotel. In Tobago, Keith Rowley and the PNM were not bringing one cent from Sanders. They were going to borrow one billion US for you, the taxpayers, you, the Tobagonians, you, the Trinidadians, to pay back at 6.4% interest, which means that there was not one bit of investment. They keep trying to lie to Tobagonians and say, we run investment. Investment means people are coming to spend their own money, not a government going to borrow money to build a hotel. At that time when they were state, there were over 13,000 hotels under construction in the world. Do you know how many were being built with government taxpayers borrowed money? Zero. So don't let them fool you. There was no investment. It was never an investment. It was Rowley going to borrow money to hand his friend Butch so that them could decide who and what will get rich. That was nonsense. If people want to invest in Tobago, the UNC will never stop it. We need it. We need hotels. We need rooms. Tobago is the one island that could save us from this foreign exchange crisis. Understood. Uh, now, as you know, we, as you round up the discussion this morning in your area of expertise when it comes to sport, uh, tell us about some of your perspectives on this new appointment of um, Dwight York as the captain of the national team. Well, I don't know how much time you have because the, my respect for Dwight York it will take about an hour. It's a great appointment. Dwight York is a legend. Dwight York is the most successful footballer in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. Dwight York is a professional bar none. Dwight York's attitude, his detail, his attention to, to practice, his love of the game, his skill level is unprecedented. I played against Dwight York in 1987. For those who remember when Fatima came across and we beat Signal Hill in a 2 0 in Shaw Park and Tobogonians were balling, go Fatima, go. Dwight York was the epitome. He dribbled our whole team. We played them a second game because they ended up winning the title on goal difference and sports and games put up a thousand dollars in equipment and we beat them again one nil. But Dwight York dribbled everybody, all 11 of us, including me as a forward. I went back to try to tackle and he shake me. I couldn't see the ball. I couldn't touch it. Dwight York went to England, was a young lion. Manchester United after that. Greatest winning a treble, winning four or five premiership titles, Champions League. Dwight York was one of the greatest goal scorers in premiership history. A consummate professional who kept his body in such a state of fitness. 
his discipline and his love. He, he did that and he surpassed all Trinidadians because he's a Tobagonian. And Tobagonians have a greater sense of discipline, a greater hunger for greatness, a greater <laughs> willingness to be disciplined and take the pain. Dwight York is a legend footballer and he deserves the job. However, it don't matter how good you play, coaching is a different thing. And Trinidad and Tobago football is at the lowest level from junior under 10 comes straight up girls and boys. Dwight York cannot create some magic and just make us start to win. We are in the CONCACAF where at best we are ranked about 10. We're behind USA, Mexico, Canada, El Salvador, Honduras, Costa Rica, Panama, Jamaica. We are woefully behind. So do not think just because Dwight York, a brilliant player, and now he did well in, in Australia and so on, that he is going to come to miraculously make us go and play USA, Mano, Mano, Costa Rica, and so on. That will not happen. He needs to be given time. He needs to take control of all levels. He needs to get a staff that is not of his friends. You see, you don't need friend in coaching. What you need is people to carry out your philosophy, your discipline. He needs to find players in his own likeness. Dwight York is the hardest working fittest. That man in the 50s, and he looking like he's 25. All you might say is just Tobago blood. But it's Tobago blood <laughs> with hard work. That man is a serious individual. And I can venture to you that even the senior players who are playing on the national team, are only about 20% as committed as Dwight York. So he has to find players, give them the opportunity, score Trinidad and Tobago, no nepotism, no friendship, no nobody gain a sweat because they're nice. And then we will move forward. But we cannot rush. We cannot put too pr much pressure on him because we have to understand where we are and how difficult the task is. But it's a good hire. It's well done. He deserves the opportunity. Thank you so much, uh, Senator Andrew Roberts. Thank you for that perspective. And everything that you said about Tobagonians, I have to agree. Very hardworking and dedicated, quite disciplined people. All right. Guys, we want to thank you so much for being a part of this morning's discussion. Thank you for your likes, your shares, and your comments, and doing all that you are doing and continuing to do to make Tobago Updates the number one broadcaster here on the island of Tobago. Again, mm -hmm. I am happy to be back and seeing you here this morning. And thank you. Have a great day.